Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing our journey exploring the history and development of Quinch Opera, one of China's oldest and most popular performing arts. Quinch Opera is remarkable, if for nothing else, because of the long time it has been around. And it continues to exert a strong appeal today. Credit for this longevity can be ascribed to the scholars who, down through these centuries, have devoted themselves to protecting the nation's culture and quinch opera in particular. Among the latest of them is Bai Shenyong, a well-known writer. He wanted to train some young performers as well as a young audience who would develop a love of quinch opera. His plan was to produce a special version of the quinch opera masterpiece, The Peony Pavilion, for young people. In April 2006, a nine-hour version of the Kuen Chu opera The p and &E Pavilion, designed specifically for young people, was staged at Peking University over three days, and many young people were attracted to the performance and to the style. The producer of the young people's version of the Kuen Chu opera The p and &E Pavilion is famous overseas Chinese writer Bai Xianyong. Bai has been promoting Kuen Chu opera among university students with great passion, and for this, he has come to be called the volunteer worker for Kuen Chu Opera. The theme of his speech today is classic aesthetics and modern ideology. Bai Xianyong called his new production of the p and &E Pavilion a young people's edition in an effort to initiate a cultural movement to bring forth new, young Kuen Chu opera performers and fans. And so, a story that took place 400 years ago is today being reenacted on stage. And to the theatre goers of today, the story has two meanings. One concerns the profound love story between Liu Mengmei and Du Liniang. The other is about the nation's commitment to defending beautiful things. In the autumn of 2004, curators of art galleries from three dozen countries from all over the world gathered at Manchu PG Garden in Suzhou, having just attended the fifth Shanghai Biennial Exhibition. They had come to find out how men of letters lived in ancient China, and the Chinese sponsor of the event arranged for them a performance of the Kuen Chu Opera of the Peony Pavilion in Manchu PG Garden. It's a dream of dreams. Because culture needs to be 
，你必须在那个情境当中，你必须在庭园里，你在在在湖边，在在楼楼楼榭这个回廊当中走，啊，你你你你你会有想象力，啊，一个一个回顾性的想象力。我走在那个那个小小庭园的那个亭子上，边边上取向栏杆呀，那个呃取取向栏杆呀，呃小桥流水呀，各种那个盆景点缀着呀，那浮想联翩。确实我，我我会想到，这里会不会有几个文人在这里一边品茶，一边拍曲，那昆曲的声腔就会响起来。在那个氛围氛围里边，他这种曲调就恰是当时可以感觉到的一种天籁。就是因为我们有有这样一种生活的样式，这种生活的情趣、生活的追求理念，所以才形成我们这样一些文化。那么反过来，这些文化呢，又会影响我们的生活的情趣、生活的样式、我们的价值的观念。我们在看这种中国文化史的每一部分史的时候。看着看着，最后大姐的迷失，我是谁？我们是谁？就是我们这个群体是谁？我们为什么爱这些东西爱了那么久？爱它也就是实际上也是自我实现。为什么自我实现？这个原因就是昆曲一定有我们是谁的秘密所在。Several hundred years have passed since those times in this garden, and time has imprinted its mark on every brick and tile. Here, melodies of Kuanchu opera were sung for several hundred years. History is an endless dialogue between the past and the future, and as part of this dialogue, we should retrace the history of Kuanchu opera over the past 600 years, recall the people and events that are receding behind us, and recapture. The beautiful dreams and pursuits of a nation. Kunsh opera developed from something called the Kunshan tune, popular during the reign of the Ming Emperor Jia Jing. Based on this Kunshan tune, a group of folk musicians led by Wei Liangfu created something called the Shui Mo melody. Drawing on influences from all over the country, Shui Mo, in fact, represented a brand new approach to singing. In southeastern Suzhou, there is a place called Kunshan, where, about 600 years ago, a new theatrical form was born. As it evolved, this theatrical form came to incorporate features of the musical styles, both instrumental and vocal, of the Tang and Song dynasties. That form is known as Kunqu. 因为我们知道中国这个整个诗词的发展，唐宋最辉煌，是吧？那么，可是我们往往忘掉有一点呢，就是唐朝这个诗跟词经常也是谱的曲，也是变成他们的流行歌曲来唱的。But have any of these poem songs from the Tang and Song dynasty survived to the present day? Is it even possible to retrieve or reconstruct the music of a thousand years ago? This ancient musical score, uncovered by historians, provided hope of doing just that. But in spite of the considerable effort put into deciphering it, so far neither musicians nor historians have been able to interpret it. Restoring a piece of Tang or Song dynasty music, even when a score is available, is still impossible. One may well ask how this can possibly be the case. 从唐唐宋以来的这这些个曲曲谱的技术技技术，它都是技术这个它这个主干音。嗯，中中间加的一些加花的一些小小的，他都不不记，有的是甚至就像像这个这个啊
，送送蛋什么，姜姜姜葵、姜姜白石的一些东东西，那那那是连连连其他都没有，就就那么记下来。所以这个后后人后人呢，是怎么唱都可以。Does this mean then that the tunes for Tang and Song Dynasty poems have been lost forever, or is there some way they can be retrieved? Let's look at a score. Bu Bu Zhao and Zui Fu Gui are Tang and Song tunes, both familiar to contemporary people. This score, used for Kun Chu singing during the Ming Dynasty, presents these pieces in greater detail. The large characters are lyrics, while the small ones to the right indicate pronunciation. The circles and dots in the upper right corner indicate the tempo and the length of the notes. A score with these symbols is commonly referred to as a Gong Chu score, and thanks to Kun Chu, which utilized and thus preserved a number of Tang and Song poetry tunes, these ancient melodies have come down to us through 1,000 years of history. But is it possible to read these Gong Chu scores accurately? Gong Chu, 实际上，呃，上尺公凡六五一就是哆来咪发嗦拉西。我们小时候学的是学公尺谱，后来呢简谱，所以我们现在一般呢，我们自己也能把公尺谱翻成简谱。在音阶中 ，D 大调中的刀就是上；音阶里的 r 就是尺。When Ma Hongbo worked on a theme for this program in November of 2006, he incorporated a number of notes from a Gong Chu notation piece that is several hundred years old. So Kun Chu is precious, it's precious. It's been 600 years old. Even though there is a lot of change in this world, it's not a lot of change. It's been passed away. So in fact, singing Kun Chu is what we understand about Chinese music. It's not a lot of change in the world.